On all new pro wrestling show this week, man on man, the robbery report, a uh, return your superstar returns from injury, and he's on Team Flair. I won't believe who. Plus, the Street Poppers put up or shut up. They make the in ring debut. Did the Street Poppers deliver? We'll find out. Also, on the SmackDown Ring Report, man on man, teams, whole game flair, the chess games continue on Mountain as we get to Crown Jewel. The whole game flair appeared on SmackDown. You'll see that. And the Wednesday Night War where AEW with Chris Jericho, Cody with their title picture escalated into a Pier 6 brawl. And on the NXT Ring Report, man, you won't believe a superstar turns heel and you wouldn't even expect it to come up to again. And Hot Topics, where the latest wrestling Hot Topics, where the WWE 2K20 had a glitch. Good, you won't believe that. It's all new pro wrestling show starts right now. Welcome to the Pro Wrestling Show. I'm your host as always, Kendra Dix here. Glad you can join us here on the Pro Wrestling Show for this weekend. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to join in the conversation using the hashtag Pro Wrestling here on Connect. All right, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Pro um, Raw Ring Report. The Raw Ring Report this week. Raw kicked off with Ric Flair, the Nature Boy Ric Flair, two-time WWE Hall of Famer. He cuts a promo on Hulk Hogan saying that Team Hogan is going to lose at the Crown Jewel event. And he introduces his fifth and final member of Team Flip. He introduces the Sky Psychopath, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre coming from an injury back into the full swing of things and likely to get a monster push come along from this. McIntyre took up all his pent up frustrations out on fellow Team Hogan member Ricochet, who's going to be a part of Team Hogan. They went on one on one in a good 20 minute Broadway, I would like to say, with Ric Flair at ringside. Ric Flair knows a thing or two about Broadway's 60 minute matches. You know, they would call it Broadway's to have long matches and stuff, extensions and stuff. Back and forth, Ricochet with the high spots. Drew McIntyre trying to pound and ground and keep him down. But at the end, McIntyre outside used uh, a reverse Alabama slam and hit Ricochet onto the steel steps, pulled Ricochet back in the ring and did the um, claymore kick. And McIntyre won the match. So Ric Flair has an ace up his sleeve, has a real true blue chipper in, in um, Drew McIntyre. McIntyre Look like the star of tomorrow. He's going to be a destiny star. He's look like he's going to be a future champion someday. Oh, you got the one, the WWE, trying to remodel him, regrow him back to what he was. A rugged badass. I'm telling you, rugged badass. And, um, but I can see McIntyre being on Team Flair. He, he compliments Corbin and Randy Orton. They're all about the same size. And um, who else? Uh, Nakamura. And somebody else on the team. I forgot who else on the team, but they all come me each other being like dirty that down dog heels. So it worked bad guys. Like that. Speaking of that, Alistair Black made his made an impact on Raw when he defeated a job with Alistair Black playing that darker, sinister role, you know, aggressive but creepy at the same time. So Alistair Black making a statement. That's what he wants to do. Speaking of statements, Jared the King Lawler interviews Rusa on his King's Court about his recent marriage troubles with Lana and how Bobby Lashley got involved to be somewhat like a home record. The camera pans out to Lana and Lashley having dinner, and Rusa was talking about how he wants to keep his marriage. He he still in love with Lana, but he does does not respect Bobby Lashley. He's going to do something about it. But then later on that evening, Rusa went to the restaurant. Prior, before that, the restaurant manager notified Lana and Lashley to, hey, Rusa's coming on his way. We don't want no trouble. We don't want no brawl. Well, 
They ignored the restaurant manager's warning. Russo came in there. He went and to try to take down Bobby Lashley, and Russo got arrested. So, you know, hey, Russo got arrested, and Russo got bailed out of jail. But Russo, Lashley, and Lone, this whole little love trying thing is not far from over. I'm telling you right now, it's not far from over what to what I speak and say about it. You know, them being on team Lashley, being on team Flair, that was who was Lashley was on team Flair and Russo was on team, yeah. Hold it. So it's going to be personal grudges during out Crown Jewel and championship matches throughout that match. Also, Andrade, Raw's new draft draftee with Selena Vega, defeated the aerial returning Sin Cara, who's been doing a lot of work as late chair to work for the um, Texas El Paso shooting. And he's, he came back to Raw. He lost in a losing effort, but uh, Andrade looking strong. Well, Raw, I think that's what they focus on. Raw, they focus on Alice Black, Ricochet, Andrade, um, or Bert, you know, Camento. They want to focus on rising stars, and then I can't blame you. you got to focus on new. What's new is new, what's old is old. So, you know, you want to focus on that and pinpoint that and get them over as stars and stuff like that. Also, the former Raw tag team champions, Hawkins and Ryder, went against the current. Tag team champions, the Viking Raiders. Back and forth, the match was explosive. Viking Raiders with that um, explosive offense, and that's what they do. They do offensive maneuvers. You know, you can't different rate one or the other. Right, Hawkins and Ryder just didn't have no shot and no chance, and they lost to the Viking Raiders. And you have to wonder when the Viking Raiders are there, the strong contenders to win the World Cup coming this coming this Thursday for the Crown Jewel event. Stream live on WWE Network. Also, the returning Rey Mysterio returns. He calls out the Beast Brock Lesnar. We told you a couple weeks ago the whole ordeal with Ray Lesnar. Where Ray and um was coming out there, Brock Lesnar attacked Ray and his son. And that's what came with says came out there and tried to stand up for Ray and his son. And you know, Brock Lesnar will challenge Brock Lesnar will put his title on line against Kane at Crown Jewel. Streaming live on WWE Network. I mean, you get that. Also, Paul Heyman appears on the screen and tells Ray that Brock's on SmackDown and there's no need to worry about that. And he's just merely an advocate because he can come on any show he wants. Hence that he's the executive director of Raw, but he can be he's on SmackDown managing Brock Lesnar. <laughs> and that he that Brock wants his revenge on Kane Velasquez. And on Ray and everybody else. So later on the Spanish report, it was something devastating that Brock did to those three. We'll get to that on the Spanish report. But Shelton Benjamin, a fellow associate, fellow mentor, or what you may want to call for Brock, returned and tells Ray that Brock is family to him. He helped train Brock Lesnar. He helped teach Brock Lesnar. He gave he gave Brock Lesnar the whole experience and the fundamentals. His Y'all, uh, OVW. You know, Brock is coming for Kane. But Kane came out there and made the say to Ray and attacked Shelton Benjamin and had Shelton Benjamin tap him like you wouldn't even know how to, how to tap and stuff coming from Stick. <laughs> Shelton Benjamin got away and dodged Kane Glass head because he didn't want no more part of Kane. Also, Universal Champion Seth Rollins went against Raw's newcomer, Herbato Carrillo. After Carrillo made comments that um, Seth Rollins had burnt the 5 5 firm house down, and um, Seth Rollins probably didn't like what he had heard, but he challenged him to a match. It was a non title match. The match was good, back and forth. Quickness from Rollins and Alberto Carrillo were coming from 205 Live. So, a lot of 205 uh, alums coming to Raw and SmackDown and making a statement. And at the end, Rollins won, and um, at the end of the match, Rollins offered his hand, extended his hand, and Alberto shook, and that's what they, you know, earns his respect. So, that knows that's, that's good. And finally, the main event was the Street Profits, one one on one against former Raw Tag Team Champion, the OC, the Anderson Gallows, back and forth with AJ Styles at ringside with Allison Gallows, and people was thinking to the Street Profits, like, who's that third man? Uh, we, we were trying to find out was Street Profits going to live up to the expectations or live down to the expectations. Street Profit 
won their match with the help of Kevin Owens, who gave AJ Styles the stunner. And uh, I guess Kevin Owens and AJ Styles had a uh, rivalry back uh, two years ago. Now they're going to redo it. So, Street Profits want that smoke, and they got the smoke. They need won the match. So, Street Profits 1 0 on Raw thus far. They was, they, Street Profits was like the former NXT Tag Champion. So, I. Uh, you probably won that match. All right. That ends the Raw Ring Report. Let's move over to the SmackDown Ring Report this week. Okay, the SmackDown Ring Report. And don't forget, people, to subscribe. If you like this channel, this video, subscribe. Don't subscribe. Tell a friend, call a friend, subscribe. So, uh, we'll just spend that report. All right. We'll spend that report this week. SmackDown kicked off with Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair. But their teams all assembled in the ring for a special Miz TV. Well, the Miz was trying to figure out who, you know, back and forth, Hogan, Ric Flair, Living Legends, cutting promo. They had Ali, they had Short Gable, who was wearing something like basketball attire. They had Roman Reigns out there, Jim Hart was out there, or Hogan, Hogan was out there, and Sami Zayn, Nakamura, King Corbin, um, that was it for a minute. And then um, Hogan said, let's have a six-man tag team match. And they wanted Sami Zayn to be, and Hogan made fun of Sami Zayn, but um, Sami Zayn said, no, nah, I got somebody belt and had Cesaro to replace him. So Cesaro was going to be later on in the main event. Cesaro, and the continental champion, Shisuke Nakamura, King of the Ring when the Baron Corbin versus Roman Reigns versus Ali and versus Shorty Gable in the main event. So got that. Also, the New Day went against Ziggler and Rude, former Raw Tag Team Champion, after the Revival got involved. When the Revival got involved and cost them the match, Rude and Ziggler won until Heavy Machinery came out there and um, helped with the, the New Day to feed off the Revival and, and Rude and Ziggler. I think all these tag teams are vying for that World Tag Team Cup that's coming from the WWE Network for the Crown Jewel event. The best tag team in the world. And you heard that before, before. Okay. So, we had that for the Crown Jewel event. Okay. Speaking of that, SmackDown newcomer, Lacey Evans, she cuts a promo and she tries to go against a jobber. The jobber girl thinking that she was going to win, but Lacey Evans told her, hey, I'll let you win this match. And, you know, the jobber girl know, should know better. Lacey Evans came out there and nailed the job of girl out with her women's rights signature and won the match. You can't trust Lacey Evans in one bit. Lacey Evans also made some interesting news. We'll talk about that later on in the um, show on Hot Topics. So stay tuned for that. Also, before the match, Drew Gulak, former Cruiserweight champion, demonstrate his PowerPoint to, to the tail of the tape between the Monster Mon Man Braun Strowman and the Millennial Gypsy um, King Tyson Fury on ways how Brahms going to lose to Tyson Fury. But um, Gulak hey, was trying to give his keys to victory until Braun Strowman came out there and distracted Gulak and came out there and cost Gulak his match against Lucia House Party member Kalisco. And Strowman took all his, his punishment off on Gulak with two power slams, leaving Gulak out down and out for the count. Drew, when you going to learn that Braun Strowman is nothing to play with, <laughs> but he respects you being in the wrestling game. It's just, you know, things happen for a reason. Also, my co interviews Daniel Bryan and asked him, is the Yes Movement coming back? Daniel Bryan was torn between the two until Locker Moore came out there and Sami Zayn asked him, like, hey, you can join forces with us or you can join or you want to revert back to them. Brian was kind of, you know, torn and conflicted. So Daniel Bryan has a lot to think about coming up. Should he bring back the Yes movement and join the fans, or should he side with Sami Zayn and Nakamura as they start their own revolution or something? Also, former women's tag team champion Dean Cross, and no more contender the women's championship. Dean Cross went against Mandy Rose. Good hard fought matchup with Bailey at ringside with Sasha Banks. Nick Cross, it looks like she's ecstatic. She's excited to begin a women's championship match. But are they playing the seeds between her and Alexa Bliss 
at the last minute, not receiving any more opportunities and making across years. So you kind of wonder about that. What they're doing with that? I think that's what they're doing. They're playing the seeds with Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. So Nick or Alexa Bliss gonna be like, you get more tire opportunities than I ever would imagine. Because why are you getting all this? And Nick Cross was a little kind of, you know, confused and shell shocked. She didn't realize the senses and stuff. Also, Kane, Brock Lesnar, and Brock Lesnar were supposed to have a face to face. Well, that didn't happen. Brock rejected the idea, but Heyman allowed to speak for him. And Heyman told Ray that Brock's not coming out there. Brock's going to come get Kane when he wants to. But Ray would speak for Kane, and Ray screamed at Brock for no apparent reason. But Brock had other ideas and beat up. Ray's son Dominic and left him lane. Ray was trying to attend his son Dominic and um Kane. But that didn't stop there. As when Ray and Kane was checking on Dominic, Brock Lesnar from behind with a trash can attacked Kane and Ray. And Brock F five Kane, he gave Ray he F five Ray. He picked up Kane and he F five Kane on top of Dominic, leaving Dominic out. I said, man, Brock Lesnar doing the most. Brock Lesnar showing his path for destruction. Brock Lesnar doesn't care. Brock Lesnar just wants the money. And Brock Lesnar just want to, you know, do what he want to do because he's Brock Lesnar. He's a WWE champion. So WWE championship is very personal between Kane and Brock. But Brock still saying that what Paul Heyman saying that Brock has to look at the scar every day or what Kane had done to him. Kane might not know what he's getting himself into in Brock's world. You know what I mean? Also, in a huge six-man tag team match where Shorty G, Ali, and Roman Reigns took on the team of King Corbin, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Cesaro. Good match back and forth with WWE Hall of Famers, Ric Flair, and, and his team, Corn, and Hulk Hogan on his team, Corn, with Jimmy Hart. Back and forth match was good. Good high spots from Ali, good high spots from Shorty Gable. Joy gave with those quick wrestling maneuvers. But at the end, Roman Reigns delivered a spear on um, Cesaro. He tagged Ali. He gave tag. Ali hit this 450 splash and won with one, two, three, and won the match for his team. Could this be an almond or what, a preview of what we may see at the Crown Jewel event? That's, that's a tell. Will Team Hogan be victorious with Roman Reigns, Ali, Shorty J, Shorty, Shorty G, Rusev and Ricochet. There's a possibility in this is like a Survivor Series match. We'll see on that. All right. That is the SmackDown Ring Report. When we return, we're going to have the Wednesday Night War Report. Then we're going to have Hot Topics. Don't go anywhere. This is a pro wrestling show. Thank you.